Hello everyone and welcome to another great game from round 7 of this year's Norway Chess. It is Wesley So versus Nodrbek Abdusatarov and it's uh, one of those games where uh, you don't make a mistake but you still lose somehow. Uh, how, how, how does this happen in chess? Well, uh, your opponent constantly makes a move that's a little bit better than the move you've uh, made previously and you know the, um, advant uh, the advantages just keep stacking up and at some point after some uh, 10 or 20 moves uh, it uh, you know reaches that breaking point where you actually have enough advantage to win the game so uh it's not uh, that we will have some sort of a crazy pause the video moment but it's just a very very uh, slow positional outplay that uh, we are discussing and we will already have a completely new game as of move seven so uh, also something to enjoy as the opening of choice is the queen's gambit accepted so let's check it out uh, wesley has the white pieces and he opens with d4 we have pawn to d5 uh, c4 and d captures and c4 the queen's gambit accepted as advertised we have pawn to e4 the central variation and pawn to e5 of course uh, now if white captures you can play queen captures on d1 uh, so knight to f3 and now uh, e captures on d4 we have bishop captures on c4 uh, and now knight to c6 we have castles and now Okay, the position is a fairly known one a bishop to e6 is the main move here other possible moves are something like bishop to c5 also knight to f6 has been played and some other moves uh, that have uh, been played less frequently but the move abdul satr plays uh queen to f6 has only been played once uh and here uh the, the game continued with pawn to e5 uh, but then queen to g6 happens and black also has some very nice pressure against the white king but in the game uh after this uh, queen to f6 move uh, wesley just played queen to g5 and it is now already as of move seven that we have a completely new game so queen to g6 now the uh, bishop has to be a little bit careful you don't uh, only the knight is defending it uh so knight b to d2 adding another uh, defender to this knight so even if this one uh, gets a eliminated this one will take his place uh, and also you are defending the e4 pawn so bishop to e7 uh, trying to trade off the bishops and the bishop back to f4 putting pressure on the c7 pawn knight to f6 offering the c7 pawn for the e4 pawn and now bishop to b5 and now uh, we get this uh, very very tricky position where uh, black sort of can capture uh, on e4 but it's not uh, something that you want to play if knight captures on e4 then comes knight to e5 uh, hence um, uh, bishop to b5 on the previous move and the queen is attacked the knight cannot move uh, it's a very uh, crazy position but you will not have a great time for example if queen to f5 knight captures on e4 can be played even the immediate knight captures on c6 can be played and then if queen captures on b5 you play knight captures on e7 uh, you ruin black's um, uh, castling for example if knight captures queen captures you will have to uh, pick up the knight because otherwise you just lose and after king captures rook ft1 check and already this is pretty Pretty much game over so instead after bishop to b5 bishop to d6 and now bishop back to g3 and here uh, uh Nodrbeck, uh, needs to decide whether he wants to trade uh, and then uh, try to maybe play knight to g4 queen h6 and somehow checkmate the white king this way if he can ever get rid of the knight from f3 or does he want to play something like knight to h5 and knight to h5 is a fun line the bishop to captures and g3 was played i'm just going to show you what happens if you go for something like knight to h5 uh, as the knight also can come to f4 but here uh, okay you have a couple of uh, moves to choose from probably knight captures um, uh, on d4 is what would happen and here okay uh, black would just castle knight captures on c6 uh, b captures on c6 and now bishop captures on c6 attacking the rook on a8 but now bishop to g4 attacks the queen uh, and uh, after uh, a move like queen to c2 you're going to play rook to b8 develop the, the rook and okay you have a very nice development for the price of one pawn and even if bishop captures let's say uh, c captures and pawn to f3 you don't uh, have anything to worry about if uh, okay the bishop now has to move even if bishop up to h3 going for checkmate you can just move the knight the queen nicely defends the pawn so everything is perfectly fine if rook uh, rook f to c8 puts nice pressure on the c file just bishop to d5 so this is um you know perfectly playable so knight to h5 uh is is an idea uh but uh, you, of course the line that we've shown isn't forced you can just trade on d6 for example bishop captures c captures and now knight to h4 and then we get this crazy position queen to h6 and who knows what's uh what's really happening here uh they want none of that bishop captures and g3 was played with h captures and now castles we have rook the c1 nicely developing and now knight to g4 so like we said if uh abdu satro can somehow get rid of wesley's knight on f3 then checkmate is near uh, but that's easier said than done 
Uh, one of the ways uh, 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 Nodrebek could attempt this is by playing knight to e5 at some point. This will force a trade of at least one of the knights. So bishop captures on c6. Uh, we have b captures and now queen to a4, putting pressure on that um, uh, c6 pawn. And now, while well, you would probably expect bishop to d7 here, uh, yes, then queen captures on d4. So uh, and, and none of it really works. But it, it could be an interesting try. For example, bishop d7, queen captures, and then you play rook f to d8. Could be, could be very nice. Uh, uh, then maybe at some point, maybe queen h6, you can pick up the knight here. The knight will not be able to move, but that's all, of course, uh, you know, those are ideas that are not really possible. Uh, you just, uh, I mean, you, you might try and get an active play out of those ideas. Uh, but instead, queen to h6 was played. Uh, Nodrebek just gives up the pawn on c6, and this is his idea. Rook captures on c6, attacks the queen here. Now bishop to d7. Now he offers a queen trade. Uh, rook captures on h6, bishop captures on a4, and now rook to h5. Rook to h4 also looks very nice, but the knight can simply uh, be defended by the bishop. So rook h5, and now knight back to f6. Uh, there's a, also a, a very fine line with pawn to f5, uh, the, defending the knight and trying to open up the... Uh, the f-file, and then if rook captures on f5, you can even temporarily give up a pawn here for pawn to d3, and this pawn, uh, it's a passed d pawn, it will be incredibly uh, powerful here, if some like rook to c1, going after the pawn, even bishop to c2 can be played, uh, and so on, I mean, uh, a lot of, a lot of poison in this position, uh, but instead, knight back to f6 by Noderbeck, we have rook back to a5, attacks the bishop, and bishop to c2 now, now putting pressure on that e4 pawn, uh, pawn to e5, and knight to e4, we have rook to c1, attacking the bishop, and now not bishop to d3. Uh, bishop to d3, although, uh, I mean, it'd be great uh, if you didn't have to trade the uh, knight for bishop, but if you try to rescue the bishop, then knight to e1, and your bishop has no squares. You're going to have to play knight captures on d2, then knight captures on d3, and okay, you will uh, try to defend the pawn, but then pawn to f3, and then the knight is trapped. Uh, you will lose the knight, even king to f2 to e2 captures uh, is possible. So you do not have time. Uh, to defend the c7 pawn, you will have to save the knight with something like uh, knight to e4, and then the rook will just uh, uh, capture the pawn. So not not great. So that's why, of course, uh, bishop to d3 was not played, even though you know you really want to play this move. Knight captures on d2. Now Wesley gets rid of the bishop, and now knight captures on f3 with check. We have g captures on f3, and now pawn to f6, going after the e5 pawn. Uh, again, you could play rook f to c8, trying to defend the pawn, but then pawn to f4, and black's rooks are absolutely disgusting here. There is no activity. You cannot uh, do anything here. The c5 square is covered. You can't even push c5 uh best you would have is to play something like d3 and now try and force uh uh, white to, uh, to move the rook from the c file. And of course, white will do this, then you get to push the c pawn. Rook captures, let's say, pawn to c4, but now rook to d7, going after the a7 pawn, and if pawn to a7, uh, even pawn to f5, and white is completely dominating this position. So instead, after g captures on f3, pawn to f6 was attempted by uh, Nodrebek, and now rook captures on c7. We have rook to f7, and now rook captures on f7. King captures and e captures on f6, uh, and here, uh, Nodrebek uh, is in, uh, in is in a lot of trouble. The problem with uh, recapturing, it doesn't matter what you capture with. If you play king captures, uh, just rook d5. And now you're just down too much uh, material. If rook to b8, you're going to defend the pawn. And even if rook to b4 to defend um, uh, the, the d4 pawn now, you will play king to f1. Now the king comes to d3, you pick up the pawn, and oh, you're already up uh, material. You're going to pick up another pawn, you're going to be up too much material. And if king e6, you can even play rook a5. You go after the pawn and if rook to b7 defending the pawn now you go after this pawn let's say rook to d7 you're gonna play king to d3 let's say h5 h6 f4 you're gonna uh, put your pawns on optimal squares and then at some point just win this pawn uh no way uh, a black can really stop this d5 square has been taken away from the black king you cannot defend it so uh, that that's one way to do it if you play king capture so Noderbeck tries one last uh one last idea a rook to d8 even though he's down material he has the pass d pawn and if he can push it uh, it's game over but uh wesley not want to be tricked easily just plays king to f1 and it's a it's a really uh sign of a great player because rook captures on a7 comes with check and it's even even rook captures on a7 is winning uh, but king to f1 is just um you know it, it's it really is a gentleman's move 
uh, uh, to give you an example of rook captures on a7, okay, king captures on f6, now king to f1, let's say d3, uh, king to e1, and now you get this rook to e8 with check, because the rook now wants to go to e2, you cannot uh, keep uh, pushing the pawn, uh, king to d2, rook to e2 with check, and now king captures on d3, and there are two choices here, one is to capture on f2, one is to capture on b2, uh, but none of them really work, if you capture on b2, then uh, 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 king uh, will defend the f2 pawn, and and uh, not a lot to be done here. You're still down two pawns. A pawn will now start marching forward, and that's it. And if you capture this pawn, it's not much better. Pawn to b4 is coming. You can even give up all of these pawns. You don't really care because white is just too fast. King captures with check. King to c4, rook captures on g3, but already pawn to b5 is here. You, you cannot go behind the pawn. You have to waste an additional tempo. Uh, b6, you're going to play rook to b1, king to c5. And now uh, if black starts pushing as well, which is basically black's only counter idea, uh, pawn to b7. And if pawn to h4, now you run into the very unpleasant rook to a6 check. Uh, king goes any square doesn't really matter, rook to b6, and the pawn promotes uh, after a few checks are given. For those of you who do not believe me, here we can give a few checks, and after king to d2, the rook has nowhere to go, uh, or rather, you will have to give up the rook, otherwise um, the queen is coming into the game. So uh, that's why rook uh, captures an a7 check is winning, but uh, Wesley, a true gentleman, uh, of course, in classical chess, uh, just plays king to f1, and now Noderbeck knows it is all over. He played d3, Wesley played king to e1, and he was in this position on move 28 uh, that Noderbeck Abdusator resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So truly incredible. Uh, you might think, okay, 28 moves, that's some sort of a Morpheus-esque miniature, you know, with uh, blazing sacrifices, but no, it's, uh, you know, they traded pieces. Wesley went into a better endgame, being a pawn up, uh, and little by little, he accumulated his advantages and just, uh, you know, took uh, uh, took the whole uh, three points. Uh, so yeah, here he resigned because of the exact same idea that we've uh, covered now, only without the wasting a move on rook captures on a7, basically rook to e8 to check, let's say king to d2, again we get rook to e2 with checking captures on d3, and everything else is the same, doesn't really matter. Uh, Black will have to waste an additional move uh, capturing this at some point, and Wesley will have to waste an additional move capturing this at some point, so, you know, uh, no point in even trying. Nodrubek knows this, and uh, he uh, just resigns the game here. Uh, so yeah, really nicely done by Wesley. Uh, Noderbeck, uh, I, I love it when he goes and uh, these young players, when they go for the Queen's Gambit accepted, uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, you know, in the olden days, they said that the Queen's Gambit is the only Gambit that's not really a Gambit because you're not Gambiting <laughs> anything. Uh, if Black takes it, uh, he will really have to fight for his life. Uh, even though, of, of course, you can play it. I mean, you can play anything, uh, but it's not, I mean, it's not easy, especially against a player like Wesley, uh, who, you know, is not a classical world champion, not a rapid world champion, not not a blitz world champion but he is a fisher random world champion uh and you know that uh, definitely uh, tells you a lot about uh, you know uh going uh, to unexplored uh, areas with wesley uh he will he will just destroy you uh, so yeah, for those of you who haven't seen my previous video, uh, here are the uh, here are the uh, mutual encounters. This is round seven. So Fabi lost to Gukesh in Armageddon, even though Fabi was completely winning. Uh, that's the previous game that I've covered. Uh, Fabi lost on time in a, in an absolutely crazy queen and pawn endgame. Wesley defeated Noderbeck in classical, so plus three points for Wesley. Hikaru defeated Shakhtar in uh, Armageddon. Uh, Magnus defeated Alireza also in Armageddon. Magnus won all of his matches after losing that game to Fabi, uh, but uh, he uh, won all of them in Armageddon, so not a lot of points for him. And Danish defeated Tari uh, in classical chess. So here are the standings for those of you who haven't seen it. Fabi still in the lead. Hikaru, uh, uh, <laughs> Hikaru and Fabi, if they do well in round eight, uh, in round nine, they will be fighting for first place uh, as they will meet there. Uh, so probably a win in classical in the final round will mean uh, a victory in the tournament. Then we in third place, Wesley. Gukesh and Dani sharing with 10 points, fourth and fifth. Alireza in sixth with nine and a half. Then Magnus and Shahriar are uh, sharing seven and eight uh, with nine. Noderbeck with six and Ariantari last place uh, with three points. And the live uh, ratings, if you guys uh, haven't seen them. Fabi still in number two, uh, overtook Hikaru, then Alireza, Hikaru, Ding, Nepo, Giri, uh, Wesley, Anand. Anand just keeping that ninth place like you know he, he he's just uh, amazing at, at his age just you know still in top 10 of classical chess uh, what a guy uh, and you know pretty much everything else is the same i will keep you guys informed uh, when uh, more classical games will be played so yeah, that's the game and a little bit of extra info info about um, you know the event hope you guys enjoyed that uh, i would like to thank uh, david kimura uh, 
uh, David Gasparian, uh, Brandon Fukuda, Ricky Johnson, and Farid Darabi Sanich for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.